We live in a three-dimensional world. Every point in space can be described using three numbers, the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Believe it or not, this is actually a three-dimensional video. You might not have noticed unless you're wearing a VR headset. If you have a device for watching VR videos, now would be a good time to use it. If not, don't worry. You can move your phone around or swipe with your finger to look in different directions. VR is possible today because we have fast internet speeds and small computers. But underneath the tiny circuits and speedy data is the math that describes how it works. If you're going to film a VR 180 video, then you need a camera that can record all the light coming in from the hemisphere in front of the camera. How is this done? With optics. When light enters a glass of a camera lens from an angle, it bends. The formula that describes how this happens is called Snell's Law. This formula relates the angle of the incoming light ray to the angle of the refracted beam. More specifically, the sine of the incoming ray divided by the sine of the refracted ray is a constant. This constant depends on the refractive indices of air and glass. Empowered with this formula, engineers were able to create a lens capable of recording an entire hemisphere. This is known as a fisheye lens. Fisheye lenses bend a curved hemisphere of light onto a camera's flat sensor. The sensor records the video, but unfortunately, everything looks weird and distorted. This issue isn't new to VR. In fact, it's a very old problem dating back thousands of years. When people began exploring the Earth, they wanted to create a map of what they found. But how can you take the surface of the Earth, which is curved, and draw it faithfully on a flat piece of paper? You can't. Whenever you create a flat map of the Earth, there will always be parts that are stretched and distorted. For example, in this map of the Earth, Greenland looks huge. It looks similar in size to South America. But in reality, South America is more than eight times larger than Greenland. Also, Africa is more than two times as large as Antarctica, but you would never know it from this map. To create a flat map of the Earth, we use a function called a projection. This mathematical device will take every point on the surface of the Earth and place it on a flat map. One common projection is the equirectangular projection. To see this in action, imagine you have a globe of the Earth and you want to create a map from it. You will need a piece of paper that is as tall as the globe and as wide as its circumference. So if d is the diameter of the globe, then the paper must have dimensions d by pi times d. Next, wrap the paper tightly around the equator of the globe. To visualize the equirectangular projection, draw a vertical axis through the Earth. Next, draw horizontal lines from the axis through the Earth all the way to the paper. Now, do this over and over until every point on Earth is set to a point on the map. If you unroll the paper, you now have a familiar map of the spherical Earth. It distorts the Earth, especially near the poles, but it's still a map. The equirectangular projection isn't perfect. This raises a question. Is it possible that someday someone extremely clever will find a way to create a flat map of the Earth that does not have any distortions? The answer is no. In the early 1800s, the mathematician Carl Friedrich Gauss proved a result called the Theorema Egregium, Latin for remarkable theorem. One consequence of this theorem is that it's not possible to find a projection from the spherical Earth to a flat map that preserves distances, angles, and all the other key measurements from geometry. It's flat out impossible. Don't blame Gauss. He was simply the messenger. Just as map makers use different projections to record the surface of the Earth, lens makers use different projections to film their surroundings. A fisheye lens can capture an entire hemisphere of its surroundings and project it on a digital sensor as a circle. But not all fisheye lenses are the same, and different lenses have different projection formulas that describe how the light is bent. These projections have names like stereographic, orthographic, equisolid, and others. To film a hemispherical video in 3D, you need two fisheye lenses, one for each eye. And these two lenses project two circular images onto the sensor. Each projected circle can be encased in a square. So the 3D hemisphere is contained in a two by one rectangle. 
Using two cameras with fisheye lenses, we now have a video with all the pixels necessary to look around a hemisphere and see things in 3D. A single frame of VR 180 video looks like this. To view the video, you will need a VR headset. These are devices with two small screens, one in front of each eye. Currently, the headsets are kind of big and clunky, but in the near future, they'll be small and comfortable. Now, how do these headsets take a video frame with two circular, highly distorted images and display them to us in a way that looks normal? The answer? More projections. Using sensors, software, and lenses, your headset determines the direction you're looking and then uses reverse projection to undo all the distortions. All for your viewing pleasure. Another way math is needed to make sense of our three-dimensional world is with parallax. Here's a demonstration. Look around and focus on an object across the room. Now look at it with one eye closed and then switch eyes. Notice how the object seems to move. This effect is called parallax. And with trigonometry, you can use how much it jumps to compute how far away that object is. Trigonometry is a study of triangles. And the triangle we'll use is made by drawing a line between the two pupils of the eyes and then drawing lines from the pupils to the object. The distance between the pupils is on average 63 millimeters. This gives us one side of the triangle. Instinctively, our brain senses the angles at which our eyes are pointing. If we knew the angles exactly, we could compute the distances between our eyes and the object. But after years of experience, our brains are able to make a very good approximation of distances of nearby objects. Thanks, brain. From angles of refraction to parallax, math is constantly used to recreate the world around us in its full 3D glory. But math is not enough. There's a lot of science and technology that goes into making this movie magic. And Socratica just happens to have videos on the science and technology of VR. So be sure to check them out. I'm now going to enjoy some time in the real world, thanks to my VR headset. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>